Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha Mahadevaya Yoga 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 Shwaraya Bhuta Bhuta Bhuta
ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತೇವ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತೇವ Namaskaram, all of you. Today is uh, International Yoga Day. What this means is one must, with this one statement that the United Nations at the behest of uh, the government of India, particularly uh, our Prime Minister, when it proposed this in the UN Council, 172 countries immediately responded and said yes. Then everybody else came in later on. Never before for any resolution, 172 countries in UN have agreed upon one thing. This one thing, all of them agreed that this is needed. This is not just about declaring a certain day, because there is even a bubble bath day. All kinds of days. It's not about that. United Nations is, is even thinking of how to make yoga as a tool to fulfill the sustainable development goals. Because slowly the world is realizing that without an inner experience of unity, without an inner experience of inclusiveness, everything that we do, even if we start with the best intentions, it can go all bad simply because of the divisive nature of human intellect. It divides everything. Dissecting and dividing everything is not the answer. This continuous dissection <laughs> with uh, every human being thinking that they have razor-sharp intellect, always going on dissecting everything and making a mess out of it. <laughs> See, uh, there have been Gnana yogis who had uh, worked upon their mind, their intellect, for years or sometimes lifetimes to get to such a point of sharpness that by dissection they could divulge and realize the reality. Uh, but most people's lie, uh, it should be that kind of a knife, I mean. <laughs> but most people have uh, an intellect whose front edge is somewhat like this. If they try to dissect with this, they will smash everything. This is all that's happening. Because to pursue realization through one's intellect, the work is not upon realization, the work is upon the intellect continuously sharpening it, sharpening it, sharpening it in such a way that it will slice through everything. They say, in India there are certain martial cultures where uh, 
this is largely gone, but only at the wedding time a man has to prove that he is a man. So, he will take a sword and uh, cut a, a banana, uh, you know, a tree or a stem. In one slice he must go, in Japan they have traditions of... because uh, of the samurai and other kinds of traditions, they chop bamboos to prove how sharp the sword is and how skillful you are, both skillful and strong you are. So if you slice the banana stem, generally the expectation you must slice it in such a way that the stem doesn't realize what happened, so it must sit right there. It's two pieces, but it's sitting right there, you must slice it like that. That means you should have refined your sword to such a point and also your skill and your strength. Well, if you have that kind of a razor-sharp, super-sharp intellect, yes. But if you have this kind, it's better to drink it. <laughs> don't... <laughs> don't try to dissect with a blunt object. If you try to dissect with a blunt... blunt object, uh, well, you will have mincemeat. You will not see anything that is there. <clears throat> this happened. A biology teacher was demonstrating a dissection of a frog. Poor frogs. Everybody is interested in seeing what is inside that poor frog. And he's always speaking out, this is what is in my heart, but nobody listens. They want to use a knife. So he was dissecting this and uh, explaining things to the students. Not everybody is interested in the frog, there are other interests. <coughs> so as he was doing this and explaining various organs and stuff in the f frog, he said, if I dissect a human being, what do you think will happen? One boy said, well, you will find yourself behind the bars. <laughs> so, <laughs> this dimension of yoga is uh, not that different human beings are not capable of this, but it'll need an em enormous amount of work. Most people don't have. See, it needs a certain passion to simply sharpen the knife, sharpen the knife, sharpen the knife, sharpen the knife, and not use it because you don't want to spoil the knife. You'd, you're not going to cut vegetables and cook with this knife, no. People who have passion for their sword, they're sharpening, 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 they never use it because if you use it, it will go. That needs a certain kind of uh, passion or madness towards that. And how long it will take to get that knife to that level of sharpness? Well, it depends on various factors. Above all, how intensely one is focused on that. How to go on preparing a tool without using it? That needs enormous discipline. If you have a little sharp knife, you would like to cut everything that you see and see how it works. I see this happening all around. <laughs> if I give you a knife, you would like to, as you're going, you would like to cut this plant and see. Do that and see, cook vegetables and see, just about anything. To prepare an instrument without using it for any purpose, takes a certain level of discipline and focus, which unfortunately, normally people don't have, they will have to work. So it's better to use other... other faculties. If you are stupid enough to get angry, for example, I'm sorry, if you are uh, passionate enough to get angry,
then right now <laughs> it's become fashionable all over the world to say, this is my passion. Yoga is my passion. No, for me yoga is just a tool. I've learned how to use the tool. For you it's your passion, you hug it, you kiss it, you keep it on your head, it doesn't work. That's it. <laughs> it's like uh, I gave you a screwdriver, you suck on it, you put it in your ears, poke it in your eyes, it doesn't work. Only that loose nut you can tighten a bit. <laughs> Only then it works. <laughs> So, uh, people don't like technical words, they like... So once you're like this, don't think you are an intellectual, you're not. Or maybe you have a little sappy heart, at least use that. If you're angry, if you're frustrated, even if you're miserable, obviously you're an emotional person you better use your emotion in a good way. <laughs> Using your emotion in a good way means, uh, with emotion you don't try to cut, then it'll be like this kind of knife. You don't try to cut things with emotion. Emotion is about ignoring all the things and simply tch, that's emotion. Just embracing the world, that's emotion. Right now you're using emotion to dissect, all you will leave is mincemeat of your own life. You are not going to make mincemeat of anybody else. You will make a mincemeat of your own life, that's all. Because you're using a blunt object which should be used in some other way to dissect. This is a mess. All you will leave is a mess in the end. So yoga <laughs> I've been, you know, I just turned on the television to see the news and uh, across the world, varieties of yoga that people are doing, it's uh, both very Mm, what to say, satisfying that just all over the world in all kinds of places, uh, somebody is doing yoga standing knee deep in the snow, somebody is doing it in the desert, somebody is doing it with their children, somebody with their dog, somebody this way, that way, all kinds. Well, it's cute and nice, it's amusing, it's scary. All things at once, it's I'm glad so many people wanting to do yoga. But what yoga they should do, how they should do, nobody to tell them. Everybody thinks, because we are going with the dissection example, we'll continue otherwise I'll have to invent another one, okay? Uh, everybody thinks they can, you know, Nitya Nitya Vicharam, that means you're able to decipher with the sharpness of your mind what is absolute and what is transient, what is eternal and what is momentary, you're able to decipher. Oh, but for that you need a very sharp knife, not a, not a vessel or a ball, with that you're not going to do dissection. With that, if you have a vessel for a mind, no, I'm saying there's lots of pure water. I'm, I'm not saying vessel in a bad way. If you have a round object, then you must just embrace. You don't try to decipher which is high, which is low, which is eternal, which is momentary. All this you don't go, you just embrace everything as it is. That means, you do not decipher what is high, what is low, what is God, what is devil, what is good, what is bad, what is me, what is you. You don't decipher, you treat everything the same way because you don't have a very sharp knife. No Sadhguru, I'm very smart, even in my school they said I'm very smart, I got first strength. 
usually first rank people are all... <laughs> I have nothing against them, I'm not saying this because I didn't get it. <laughs> I never aspired for it. It never occurred to me that I have to be first in anything. Uh, I don't know, that thought never came to me. And I thought it's a very poor number. I mean, it's a least denomination. Generally in my class, I think almost right through my school days, it's somewhere between twenty-four to thirty-six, thirty-seven students is what I had in my class. I always took the top number. <laughs> yeah, the thirty-five people, I'm thirty-five. So, <laughs> because of that, I did not think on those terms, but I'm saying, when you are not willing to spend enormous amount of effort and time in sharpening your knife, it's best to embrace everything as it is. No up, no down, no high, no low, no love, no hate, simply everybody as it is. Insect, bird, worm, human beings, men, women, children, whatever, you just uh, everything. This is not a bad path, it's very good. It is just because more than seventy percent of the human beings on this planet are far more emotional than they are mentally sharp or energetically intense or physically very enhanced, more than seventy percent. The highest among the four dimensions of body, mind, emotion and energy, seventy percent are emotionally strong. Only thing is their emotions are against themselves or against somebody. See, even if you have an eg emotion against somebody, it only works against you. Once in a way you can take out on them. See, right now I hate this guy. I'm using him because his eyes closed, so it's okay. <laughs> See, he doesn't mind, okay? I hate this guy. Once in a way I may get to meet him somewhere and abuse him. Rest of the time he just burns my heart out. Acidity will come in the stomach, hatred people <laughs> It'll rise to the head one day and give you tumor in the head. Because by hating someone, you're not doing anything to him. You are destroying this one. So whether it's anger or hatred or jealousy or resentment, is not against somebody, it's only against you. If you learn how not to turn your emotions against yourself, if you understand negative emotion, see because emotion can give you such a high, to get that kind of a thought, please try this, to get that kind of a thought that you will feel <sniffs> When did it happen to you? For most people it's never happened. I would say only two to three percent of the population in the world get that kind of thought, such penetrating thought, it's liberating and wow, thought. For most other people, they're capable of getting that kind of an emotion. They can feel an emotion where they'll feel <coughs> everybody's experienced at least a few moments in their life. So that they are emotionally capable of growth. So the same emotion if it hits the bottom, of course, <laughs> it'll take you to hell. Because hell and heaven are two sides of the same coin, you must just learn to flip it right. Or like me, you must fix the coin, both sides heaven. But Sadhguru, you said there is no hell heaven, you said there is reincarnation, I will come back. <laughs> you 
it once happened. It happened. <laughs> Shankaran Pillai was having a conversation with his wife. Don't tell anybody, this is between husband and wife, okay? And uh, Shankaran Pillai asked, this is a spiritual conversation, asked, what is reincarnation? The wife was bored with this kind of conversation, she was uh, em doing some little embroidery. Then she said reincarnation means you will come back in a completely different way than the way you are right now. Then Shankar and Pillai thought about it and said, does it mean to say in my next life I can come back as a pig? wife said, you are not listening to me properly, I said you will come back in a completely different way <laughs> So <laughs> So, uh, this is why, because seventy percent of the people are more capable of their emotions, hitting either peak or depths. Emotional depths and emotional peaks people know, but intellectual peaks, very few people know. I'm not saying one is better than the other, they're different kinds of tools. See, uh, if you are a screw, we need a screwdriver. If you are a nut, we need a spanner. If you're a pipe, we need a winch. Like this, tools. Don't make it one above the other. Right now, because... because of the type of schooling that you're going through, everybody has this wrong image. Being intellect intellectually sharp is better than being emotionally, you know, embracing. No, no, it's not like that. Everything has its own beauty. And all of them have the same level of possibility. Only problem is how you will use the tool, that's all. Just by building your body and using your action, you can do it. Or by raising your energies, you can do it. But needs work. You are saying, keeping even though there is a lockdown, all of you, most of you are not going to work for nearly three months. I told you at least you must be ten percent more fit than the way you were three months ago. Ten percent, Sadhguru? Three months? You should have said, Sadhguru, why ten percent? I will be hundred percent better than the way I am today. Third, ninety days, no work. I, I can exercise five times a day if I want. Could have been done because we've been very busy in the lockdown being here. But otherwise, you're locked in an apartment, what are you doing? What are you doing? Maybe couch, television, <laughs> as uh, the show gets more and more interesting. In the children's yoga programs, to inspire the children, one fundamental thing, principle that we teach them is, I complete what I start. So one day, because even potato chips in Coimbatore city, was available in discount, fearing that during the lockdown they may not be able to sell, they started selling five kg packets instead of one kg. Discount. Everything is on discount, even inner engineering on discount, you know. <laughs> no, no. There are people here who will get very insulted, potato chips, inner engineering, everything on discount. So such a big bag of potato chips, 
And in his... See, he's... Shankaran Pillai is still not enrolled for in engineering. But he had done the children's program. <laughs> this wife looked at this sack of potato chips and she said, what are you doing? He said, I complete what I start. <laughs> so I'm saying everything, just everything can be subverted. Everything, you can turn it against yourself. We give you a brain, that becomes your problem. And if I say no, you can conduct your brain the way you want it. The whole bunch of people, they're a depression company. They've been picking on me, why can't I pick on them <laughs> They're saying, he doesn't know what is depression. Depression happens, nobody chooses. Chemical changes happen. Hey, that is what even I'm saying. Do some yoga, chemical changes will happen. What else do you think I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, for all of you uh, to tell you something, because recently these papers have been published, maybe you already read it. <clears throat> a certain group of scientists and doctors in United States, from Indiana University, some from Harvard University, Rutgers and Florida, they studied people who've been practicing inner engineering for ninety days. That is, what is that? Oh, monkeys. <laughs> See, the teaching is getting popular <laughs> They They also believe they could be evolved like you. Hey, how many of you came that way? No, no, it's good, it's good for me that we transformed uh, monkeys into human beings. It's a very good... Uh, you know, because uh, I want to tell you that the genetic tendencies are changing simply with the inner engineering practices. So they recorded all these things, the biomarkers and everything. I will put it as briefly as it's an elaborate paper running into hundreds of pages. But to put it very simply, one thing that determines the nature of your experience and your mental and emotional condition is what is called as BDNF, that is <clears throat> brain-derived neurotropic uh, factors. So the BDNF is higher in a positive way threefold, three hundred percent in ninety days. I can imagine how you guys were before you started. Threefold increase, that means keeping your emotions in balance, keeping in a good state of experience and sharpness of mind and pleasantness of experience shouldn't even be a problem, three hundred percent increase. There is another dimension. You know what is uh, a cannabinoid? So a cannabinoid means like uh, today what is popularly in India it is known as ganja or uh, everywhere else it's known as marijuana. In different places it's known by different names. But essentially these are plant extracts which have a certain influence on the mood and experience of the person. But there are millions of cannab uh, cannab uh, cannabis receptors both in your brain and across the body. Because you are supposed to produce it, you are not supposed to smoke it. So now, with the inner engineering practices, it's clearly, the biomarkers clearly establish that your endocannabinoid production is significantly higher 
that means you are stoned by yourself. You don't need any outside help. But the impact of the endocannabinoids compared to the cannabinoids that come from outside are very, very different. It makes you intoxicated and super alert at the same time. Because along with it, certain other secretions happen. And the 230 genes which are fundamentally responsible for your immune system are also highly uh, enhanced with 90 days of practice. See, not a single case. Till now, I'm receiving uh, every day so many people about their friends dying, about their relatives dying, their parents dying, many, many sob stories about because they are not able to go even attend to their parents' uh, funerals or cremations or burials or whatever, because they are in lockdown. So, a lot of stories like that. But till now, I have not heard, at least it's not come to me, because generally it comes, not a single meditator who's done in engineering programs and practicing has... No, they're not dying. <clears throat> At least, let's hope they will continue to not die for some more time. Uh, but at least till now, there's not been a single information to me that someone who belongs to our, you know, regular practitioners have died anywhere, they have not. That may not be the only reason, there may be many other reasons, but definitely your immune system is higher. Now it's no more... We always know this, but unfortunately, you know, it has to come from America. So, from the laboratories in America, from the top universities in America, it's coming that clearly they're saying 230 genes which activate your immune system, they're all elevated because of the practice. So, there is enough evidence now. I am a living proof, but you know, Wrong color. <laughs> so now, our idea of science has become like this. Science cannot come from life, it can only come from a lab. Very unfortunate way of taking scientific exploration, that everything has to come from the lab, otherwise it's not true. Well, whatever, they have the reasons for that, it's okay, I'm not going to question that because anyway they're saying wonderful things about inner engineering, why should I complain? <laughs> so yoga, I think they have one song, yoga, yoga. You can put the cameras on them, it's okay.
काल से बोल रहे अनादि के दीवाने योगा कर योग बन जा टुकड़ों में दुनिया को दिल में बसाता जाए क्यों ना तू दुनिया से भुला अंतर की सृष्टि के अपने ही काय देह योगा से उनको जान जा योगा से ही हो Okay, so when we <laughs> when this uh, medical reports were given to some media yesterday, I was on today morning. I think they telecast that on Times now. So the anchor on the national television channel asked me, Sadhguru, if everybody gets stoned like this with your yoga, who will do the work? So, uh, that is the big difference. What is an endocannabinoid and what ca cannabis that you, in, you know, put from outside are very different. This question is coming because, see it's never happened, never ever happened. Somebody who is blissed out from within, ever jumped off a mountain thinking he will fly or something, but this repeatedly happened when people were using LSD, so many people jumped off windows from high-rise buildings thinking they will fly, because they were feeling like flying. Well, uh, you know, this also yesterday was another webinar where it came up. When I was twelve years of age or so, because I've been... been in nature and the forest so much, all the other things, uh, whether it is snakes or lizards or this and that, everything is fine and even the bigger animals are fine because you can figure what they're doing. One thing that always, you know, overly fascinated me and made me feel inadequate were the birds. Because boom, they'll go away. I'm not going anywhere. So I want to fly, want to fly, want to fly. When I was probably fifteen years of age, uh, I decided I will make a hang glider of my own. I got a design from the popular mechanics of the day and built a hang glider with bamboo and parachute silk I got from somewhere full of holes, I stitched it all over the place and put it together and took it to a... a s will I take it to a small hill? I took it to a reasonably big hill and flew. I think I... W I did fly, I think approximately probably twenty-two to twenty-three seconds I was flying. <laughs> Maybe it would have happened even without this <laughs> This uh, massive, huge thing, badly designed nonsense, and I believed it's going to fly and took off. And the whole thing, once the wind filled up into it, it just folded up like that. <laughs> my first concern is my hang glider broke, I didn't realize there is gravity. <laughs> anyway, I was not too high, so I just broke only... both my ankles I broke, but that... that was okay. I didn't bring my, break my head because there was no helmet, there was no anything, no protective gear. Nothing. So uh, later on, uh, it took me another probably two and a half, three years for me to collect enough money to buy a well-designed hang glider. 
And then I flew. I still have the hang glider unused for almost thirty years now. <coughs> Why I'm saying this is, this wanting to fly, I think is there in every child. They give it up because they want to be first in the classroom. Otherwise, I think in every child when they see birds flying away, wanting to fly away, I thought it'll be a very good thing for me to fly away from the window of the classroom. <laughs> if I knew how to fly <laughs> So, uh, but once I became very meditative, I, it never occurred to me, many years later I thought about it, once I became meditative, I lost the urge for aviation as such. I always thought I'm going to go into aviation, but I gave it up because if I close my eyes and said I'm more than flying, much more than flying, I lost the urge. Only recently, about eight, nine years ago, I got my license to fly. But all these years I gave it up because if I close my eyes, everything is fine. Even though you feel like that, you're never going to go on the rooftop and jump off. But those who are on drugs, they jump off. Because there is a difference between a living experience and a hallucination of flying. When you hallucinate that you're flying, you think you can actually jump off and fly. But when you're experiencing that kind of buoyancy within you, but you are very clear-headed, then it's very different. This happened. One day Shankaran Pillai met an old college friend. And that friend had gone seriously into these kind of things. So he met him and uh, they were there and this guy pulled out his stuff and started rolling. Shankaran Pillai said, why are you doing all this? He said, no, 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 you don't know, you just smoke and you will fly, man. <laughs> he said, no, 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 I... I don't smoke, I'm fine. But friend, you know friends <laughs> So he also did little. Then he was walking home. little flying but still feet on the ground. Then he saw on the street, a man was completely mangled, hit by some car and gone hit and run. He was in a bad condition. He, that man called out and said, please call me an ambulance, call me an ambulance. Sankaran Pillai looked like this. <laughs> he did. That he said, please call me an ambulance, <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ambulance <laughs> So what should come from within, you take it from outside, this what happens. Please, if you have a question. <laughs> This question is from Parikshit. Namaskaram Sadhguru. On this spiritual path, I often look at different yogis for my inspiration. Oh. I would like to know that when you were a sadhaka, did you have any inspiration? See, inspiration also means inhalation. Just try this right now. Just go on inspiring, 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 inspiring. What'll happen? No, you need to inspire and expire. Expire also means you're not using that word anymore. But uh, in Indian telegraph messages, father expired, come immediately to the standard uh, <laughs> telegram message. Somebody expired, today you use it only for pharmaceuticals. You're not using it for people, I think, anymore. So inspiration is only 
to get the engine started. You need inspiration to get started. You don't go on inspiring, inspiring, inspiring yourself every day. That means you stop and start, you start and stop, start and stop, start and stop, that's all you're doing with your life. You start, then you must go. No, you start, you stop, you start, you stop. Then every day somebody has to inspire you, inspire you, inspire you. So you are using many yogis as inspiration and inspiration that you are start and stop, start and stop. No, no, once you are is inspired, don't look for more inspiration. This is why I've been saying, suppose you read some book on yoga, some yogi, something, you got inspired, that's it. After that, don't read anything because that's going to mess you up. But no, every day you need inspiration means obviously you have not started your cold engine. So these poor yogis that you are using, I hope they are dead because dead yogis are good inspiration. Because live yogis, uh, if you have your engine started, when you are most unaware, he wants to press full throttle. That's a live yogi. Dead yogis are good inspiration. If you are using dead yogis, you can, but when you leave, get going, okay, you started, you stopped, you started, you stopped. Got inspired, again started, again stopped. Got inspired, again started, again stopped. But when will you go? You must decide. <laughs> Next question is from Sagar. Namaskaram Sadhguru. I regis registered for Sadhguru exclusive, but I have not got any information after that. <laughs> Am I being excluded from Sadhguru exclusive? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> No, uh, they have not yet really taken the registrations and uh, because initially we thought uh, we will start it like uh, every week a new video and things like that, things that there is a little bit of sensitivity of sharing it openly but of great significance, that kind of things we thought we will put it in the exclusive and put one video after another. But then we decided we will put twenty-five videos to start with, lots of masala, <laughs> lot of spice. So uh, because of that, the dates have been pushed and uh, they didn't want to uh, you know, register and then keep them waiting, so it's still in pre-registration. Most probably sometime end of July or maybe first week of August is when actually it will open up because now we are thinking minimum twenty-five videos should go, that if you go on it, you can binge for ten, fifteen hours. And then weekly, weekly they will put it up. So that always the number of videos on the platform is uh, more than what you can watch, that's the idea. But if the lockdown continues, you may watch faster <laughs> than what we can load. But we are thinking of you being working by August, so that we are always ahead of you in terms of what we have loaded there. So for that, it is taking a little bit of time. Teams are working in the archives to pull out various material. These materials or this content are things we have spoken in close groups among our Ishangas, among the brahmacharis, among various consecrations and things like that in close groups, but uh, they're very potent stuff. But at the same time, all these social media clowns, we want to keep them out, but they may always become part of the exclusive because uh, after all they will put one small little fee which everybody can pay, a kind of fee. So, this person, whoever is asking, what's his name? Sagar. Sagar. How can we exclude the ocean? <laughs> you will be in. 
But if you are a little poisonous stream, we would like to exclude you. <laughs> because this material, for is a genuine seeker who wants to know something beyond what he knows right now, beyond what is generally offered to the public. And some fun things also, it's an exclusive, so that we have little more freedom to say what we want to say. Not that I'm holding back anything right now, you know, <laughs> but little more throttle. If there is... if there is uh, people on the road, we drive one way. Nobody on the road, we drive another way. Hello? I don't know about you, me. <laughs> there are people on the road, uh, there's no problem, but you know, they may get a little excited. So I drive in a certain way, just a little above the speed limit. But if there are not too many people on the road, then I drive to my limit and the machine's limit. So there are times when we are like that, when we don't have to worry about what they will think, because people are here to learn, people are here to imbibe and absorb. So when such people are there, we consider those situations exclusive. So because this... this kind of... Uh, this kind of content is been stagnant in the archives for more than twenty years now, so we thought we will pull them out, not all of it may be very good quality video, but very good quality content, very unique kind of content. So we may even re release it audio, let's see some of it, because some of it videos and stuff may not be in good condition to release. It was long time ago, on s short on small cameras, uh, many things are there. If you're really Sagar, we can't exclude you. Hmm? The, this question is from Shivangi. Namaskaram Sadhguru. The yoga practices that you have offered seem to be taking a long time to get me to enlightenment. <laughs> Are there shortcuts? Mm -hmm. It once happened, this was in another life. Shankaran Pillai decided to commit suicide. Because of the domestic situation. And uh, he drank poison and he was on deathbed. And he had written a will. The lawyers came and opened the will, he was still not going because the poison sometimes, you know, is slow depending on what kind of stuff you had. So the lawyer read the will and said everything that he has, his home, his wealth, his bank balance, everything is to his wife. Under the condition that within three months after his death, she must remarry. Otherwise, she won't get anything. Lawyer said, this is a very strange will. Why is this like this? Shankaran Pillai said, I want at least one person to regret that I died. No, it's taking a long time, so you must be hundred and fifty years old. How old is Shivangi? We don't know. But I like the impatience. I like the impatience. If you're impatient, what you should do? You must work a little more diligently, a little more focused. Because what you're seeking is not in another galaxy. Yeah. I we just forgot. Uh, this is a... this morning around 
ten thirty, eleven o'clock, I suddenly decided we must do one painting for the yoga day. I completely forgot because this question brings this into focus. So you are in it, that's the whole problem <laughs> So what you are seeking is not far away, it's right here within you and also around you. Why is it so difficult? Like I said in the very beginning, maybe you have this kind of a mind, but you want to be like that. Because intellect makes you exclusive. You know, we've been talking about Sadhguru exclusive. Intellect always wants to be exclusive. Emotion is inclusive. Maybe you have a ball. No, I'm not saying you're having a ball. I mean, you have a ball for an intellect. But if you try to go and cut with that ball, you will be a wrecker ball. You'll wreck everything, including yourself. Or uh, maybe you think you're a Kriya Yogi, but if you do, Kapalabhati, it'll come <laughs> like this. <laughs> but you want to do Kriya Yoga, you only with energy, you'll shoot up. No, if you want to shoot up, you need lots of energy. Have you seen a rocket? You know, a spacecraft, a rocket? Before it flies, the amount of energy it releases, enormous. With that probably you can run a thousand airplanes, all right? From here to wherever. But it just stands there and exhausts so much power. Because it wants to go very far, it's built up that kind of energy. So if you want to do Kriya and go somewhere, only Kriya and go somewhere, then you need that kind of energy. If you want to do only incisive Gnana, then you would need a razor-sharp mind. But the easiest thing to cultivate for you is your emotion because already you're getting frustrated, so you have emotion. The very fact that you're getting frustrated, you have emotion, it's only the emotion which makes you feel wonderful this moment, next moment horrible, next moment wonderful, next moment horrible. If this is happening, you must understand emotion is the most dominant factor of your life. With the mind, if you want to take yourself down, that also takes time. If you want to think yourself down, it'll take lot of time. If you want to think yourself up, that also takes lot of time. But emotion is not like that, it's a sappy liquid, it sloshes. Buchuk, it'll go up there, Buchuk, it'll go down here <laughs> So now we're trying to teach you how to stabilize, so don't get frustrated because it'll go Maybe a little more heat we must turn up on you, wherever you are Shivangi, really if you become Shiva's Anga, then no problem, then no problem at all <laughs> Yoga Yoga Yogeshwaraya Bhuta Bhuta Bhuteshwaraya Kala Kala Kaleshwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha Mahadevaya Our Bhairava 
the work that is being done in the rural areas. Our volunteers are doing a fantastic work, still feeding thousands of people every day. I want you to understand the effort it takes uh, to every day feed a few thousand people in a makeshift kitchen outside because we are not letting our volunteers who are working, uh, some of our brahmacharis, residents and other volunteers are working. We are not letting them come into the yoga center for the safety of the people who are here. Uh, but they are outside in some makeshift kitchen and sleeping in some quarters in the villages and every day they are making sure good food is delivered to a few thousand people every day for over nearly, I think, uh, about seventy-seven or seventy-eight days right now. So this Bhairava painting, we have again put it out for auction, is it there? Uh, the picture is there, please, can you put it up? Uh, right now, I think today uh, we... the auction has touched uh, eighty-four lakhs, but uh, there is time till fifth uh, of... Uh, July, which is the Guru Purnima, so uh, whoever can do, please do, because this money will be used to service uh, those disadvantaged people who have nowhere else to go. I know everybody has lost something in a time like this. For some of you, your wealth, your stocks might have go down, gone down, your profits might have gone down, losses might have happened, but I want you to understand there is a large segment of people in this country who will starve to death if we don't support them. So please, let's make this happen. It's eighty-four lakhs right now, but take it wherever you think it's worth it. And uh, okay, it's a completely organic painting, that there is no uh, any kind of paints in it. It is just uh, charcoal, lime, turmeric and uh, cow dung. How else to honor a bull?